In this video, I'll look at some of the specific design elements you should consider when making a dragonfly pond. I'm not going to describe the whole pond building process here, but at the end I'll provide some links to other videos that will provide more details for building your pond. Dragonflies are great aerial acrobatics, and they make a great addition to any garden. They also eat a lot of mosquitoes and black flies, making your life in the garden more enjoyable. The best way to attract them to your garden is to create a dragonfly pond, which will give them a place to breed and raise their young. Before I talk about the pond itself, let me tell you a little bit about dragonflies. What is the difference between a dragonfly and a damselfly? They are closely related insects, and it is fairly easy to tell them apart. Dragonflies have different shaped fore and hind wings, and, like an airplane, they keep them open when at rest. They have larger eyes that are close together, almost touching, and their bodies are relatively short and chunky. Damselflies have wings that are all the same shape, and they hold them back against their body when they're resting. Their eyes are smaller, with a gap between them, and their bodies are very narrow and long. The natural history of both are very similar, and I'll just call them all dragonflies in this video. The life of a dragonfly starts as an egg that is laid on or near water, and most of them use fresh water. A nymph hatches out of the egg and lives in the water anywhere from one month up to eight years, depending on the species. When the time is right, the nymph crawls out of the water onto a vertical reed or slanted rock, or it might use an artificial wood structure like the footings on a bridge. The adult flying insect then hatches out, dries its wings, and flies away. It is quite common to find the empty nymph skins along the water's edge. The dragonfly is now very hungry and spends a lot of time searching for small insects like black flies, noceums, and mosquitoes. A large dragonfly can eat more than 100 mosquitoes a day. Their appetite for mosquitoes and their fast-flying ambush aerobatics have earned them the nickname Mosquito Hawk. The other important activity is mating. Since the flying stage of the insect does not live very long, it's important to find a mate and produce fertilized eggs, starting the cycle all over again. Since the eggs are laid in or near water, the dragonfly spends much of its time around ponds, which is also a good place for them to find insects for lunch. As you can see from this description, a water source is critical. If you want to learn more about the actual pond building process, have a look at my book, Building Natural Ponds. Here are several things you should consider when designing your dragonfly pond. It is important to provide a variety of depths, from very shallow to a couple feet or more. The nymph lives mostly in the shadows, but also likes to visit deeper regions looking for food. Provide a surface area of at least 40 square feet, or 4 square meters. This is important for attracting the flying adults and to provide them with enough space for egg laying. If this is too large for your garden, a smaller pond may also work since some species will breed in an area as small as a horse trough. Select an area with few overhanging trees. Dragonflies like sunny areas. Use a variety of pond plants, but include ones with vertical stems or leaves. Cattails and iris work very well. The pond should be natural without filters and pumps. This encourages a lot more pond life and many of the other insects living in such a pond are an important food source for the nymphs. Pumps and filters keep the pond too sterile and suck the nymphs out of the pond. This does not mean that you have to have a stinky pond full of decaying vegetation and algae growth. A natural pond, when built correctly, will have very clean water with no smell and no algae. It will be clean enough for you to swim in. Fish will eat dragonfly nymphs, so it's best not to have them in your pond. A variety of pond plants is important for attracting different species. Each species has their own preferred method of egg laying and emerging into a flying insect. By providing a variety of plants, you will have the best chance of meeting the needs of several different species. Plants growing around the outside of the pond will not only make it more natural looking, but will also give the dragonflies a place to hide from their predators, like birds and bats. Rocks around the edge will make it easier for the nymphs to crawl out and emerge as adults. Include some larger, light-colored rocks that stick out of the water. These heat up in the sun and make a perfect perch for dragonflies to warm themselves. 
You might be concerned about mosquitoes breeding in such a pond, and you are correct. They will breed in the pond, but mosquito larvae are a favorite food for dragonfly nymphs. The dragonfly should keep mosquito populations under control. If that is not enough control, you can use mosquito dunks that contain Bacillus israeliensis. These are floating tablets that release a bacteria which will kill the mosquito and blackfly larvae but will not harm other inhabitants like dragonfly nymphs. They are considered environmentally safe. I am seeing more and more posts on social media that list specific plants that attract dragonflies. Almost all of these are complete nonsense. Dragonflies hunt and eat insects. They don't eat pollen or nectar and they are not attracted to specific types of flowers or scented leaves. Dragonflies are attracted to your garden because of the water and insects, not the specific plants you grow. If you create a natural pond, dragonflies will find it. Even if you don't meet all of the above suggestions, they will still find your pond. To find out more about building natural ponds, click on the picture of my book, or watch more of my pond building videos by clicking on the playlist to the right. I hope you have a great time with your pond.